Welcome back to the Hillbilly RV channel. Today, I'm going to be working on a suburban, I believe it's a suburban water heater. Um, just got here. Hey, uh, do a service guys a favor. If you're having us come out work on a, on a water heater or a refrigerator, something that has to heat for a long time, a lot of times before you can diagnose it, go ahead and have that appliance running uh, before we get here. And uh, that would help out a lot. Because um, I get here... And the water heater's cut off. Um, so, you know, I don't know whether... Because they said to get some hot water. So I got some suspicions. But now, rather than just go right to my suspicions and try and fix this, now I've actually got to just start from square one and start diagnosing it. So uh, so let's, let's just jump right into this one. Yeah, Suburban. It's an SW12DE. So the first thing we're going to do is access the heating element right here. So that's the easiest place to check for AC power. Um, there is a little toggle switch or a rocker switch, I should say, right there. Uh, it is on. So yeah, I'm just getting the screws out there. There's only two screws in it. One of them's, one of them's broken or missing or something. So. Typically, you would have three screws to get out here. All right, so there's the end of our heating element. I know you probably can't see that, but this customer city had this heating element changed not so long ago, and apparently it worked okay until very recently. He suspects that the, water, the heating element is burnt out again, so I don't know. We're going to find out here. So I got my meter out. It's on the AC scale. Let's see if we have any power across the heating element. I think the battery just died on my meter. It's doing some crazy stuff here. Uh, let me go get another meter. Important equipment, you always have a backup. You don't rely on one. Yeah, I'm zoomed in a little bit, but hey, you know, some people don't think about stuff like this. You know, to be a professional tech, some things, you know, people want to know, well, why do you charge so much? Well, it's because we have so much stuff. You know, have to have two meters. And, you know, I've got multiples of quite a few tools, you know, important tools that you can't do without. Uh, drills, uh, impact drivers. Stuff like that. I've got duplicates of that stuff on my truck. So, so let's uh, let's see if we get any power here. I'm just going to go across the element. Just hang that meter right there. And no, we have no power. So let's check the ground. The burner tube should be a ground. We have no power. So we've lost our power somewhere. So now we got to go chasing that to see why we don't have any power. Probably the first place I'm gonna check is this switch right here. So I don't know if you can see it or not, but the, the pop-off valve is dripping on this. And that's not an exterior switch down there. So um, let's, uh, I'm gonna go cut the power off on this. And uh, then we're gonna pull that switch out and I'm gonna check it right there. I know it's gonna be really hard for you to see. You probably can't see it all, but there's a little there's a little rocker switch here on these suburban water heaters. And usually, take a little flat screwdriver. You can pry that thing out of there. As far as I know, I've got all the power cut off on this thing. I got the breaker cut off. Plus, I have the switch cut off. If for some reason the power is not off, probably going to find out here in just a minute because it'll either spark or shock a snot out of us. Somebody's already been into this switch because it's all taped up on the back. So that's, uh, that's usually not a good sign. I can get this tape off here. Take my trusty knife and cut that tape off, I guess. 
that switch has been hot. That's why somebody taped it up. It's because it's been hot and it's uh, melted the melted the insulation off those connectors. Again, not a good sign. All right, so we're gonna let that lay right there where it ain't touching nothing. And I'm gonna go cut the power on. We're gonna check power there. I'm gonna ground, ground one side. And we're gonna check the power. So we got power on that side of the switch. And we have power on that side of the switch. So the switch is not the issue. Let's double check that, make sure we don't all of a sudden have, nope, still don't have any power going across the element. We have good power on both sides of the, the switch. So then, oh, I think both of those, yep, yeah, now we got power. Both of these thermostats had tripped out. That's pretty unusual. We don't see that happen very often. Or if they're getting wet because of this drippy pop-off valve. I don't know. We'll take that cover off and look in there real quick too. This is the cover for the thermostats up here. They do have a reset button on them. I don't chip, typically check that first because we just don't see those. We just don't see those trip out very often. One of them is for the uh, one of them is for the AC side, and one of them is for the gas side. Everything looks okay there. Other than old drippy. Well, like I said, I don't see anything. I don't see anything amiss there. So I think I will uh, talk to this customer about, about changing changing this uh, pop off valve. And that'll keep uh, that'll keep that drip out of here. Maybe cause less problems in the future. It's never good to mix mix water and uh, electric or electronics either one. Just usually does not work very well. Before we go in there and cut the breaker by or the switch back off, let me just make sure we still have power here. And we do. That's across the element, 120.5 volts. So let me go, uh, I'll tape back that switch back up and uh, we'll uh, see about changing this pop-off valve. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna tape those terminals back up the way they had them. Put that switch back in. I would imagine the campground would probably like to get that drip fixed also. A lot of campgrounds are really funny about stuff like that. They don't like to see their money dripping, dripping off on the ground. So they don't, they don't like to see you waste electricity and they don't like to see you wasting water usually. That's back together. So uh, let me call my customer and see about changing this uh, pop-off valve. All right, we got to go ahead to, uh, to change this pop-off valve. So uh, let's start off by, we gotta get this flu out of our way. It's got four screws in it. A couple of them's pretty deep back in there. We get them out of the way. Then our flu is out of the way. Now I have to go in there and uh, tell him I'm gonna cut this uh, water, cut their water off for a few minutes. Man, that water hydrant hadn't been off for a while. It's pretty hard to get off. I'll relieve some pressure here. All right. And we're gonna use my biggest pair of channel locks, and we're gonna spin that old one out of there. These things can be a bear sometimes to get loose. Oh, that one wasn't bad at all. Thank you. 
don't be a putz like I was. Uh, drain, pull that drain plug out of that water heater. You'll see it down there in the bottom of the water heater. Uh, at least drain you know, some of the water out of that water heater. It make uh, changing that uh, pop-off valve much easier. I don't know what happened on my new microphones, but they quit recording for some reason. Uh, that white part of this pop-off valve, that is the thermal part of this pop-off valve. Because um, it, it actually has two ways that it will relieve pressure in an emergency situation. Either it gets too hot or there's too much pressure. And all that does is relieve pressure in that water heater so that the water heater doesn't explode. Because um, that, that would be really bad if that happens. So here I have my brand new pop-off valve. Just went to the truck and got one. And I'm going to put uh, Teflon tape on this. I actually really prefer to use Teflon tape on uh, water line fittings because it just seems like it works so much better. And, and do yourself a favor, uh, go to a, a real plumbing store and get uh, you know quality um, Teflon tape. Don't don't don't, <laughs> don't buy the little cheap rolls. You know, <laughs> at the you know wherever you get cheap stuff for you know five rolls for a dollar. Um, do yourself a favor, just, just pay a little extra for the good stuff and uh, life will be a lot easier. Now, like I say, I lost my audio on this for some reason, so uh, it's actually just a reverse process. I'm gonna put the uh, new uh, pop-off valve in and uh, get it nice and tight. And uh, I'm gonna put the flue back and then uh, we're gonna turn the water on and we're gonna uh, test it, just make sure we don't have any leaks. So. Uh, my wife says I apologize for too much stuff, but I, I have to apologize for this audio. I, I don't know what happened. It's a brand new mic system. It's been working fine until the last two videos, and then it, we've had a glitch in it. So and, uh, I'm just sorry that uh, uh, hopefully I can get it figured out. So I got the uh, pop-off valve reinstalled. I got the flu reinstalled. Now I'm just drying things up a little bit just so I can check it for leaks. I've already got the water turned on and uh, everything looks good. So I'm just going to uh, check one more time just to make sure that we have power going across the heating element. And then uh, I'll put this all back together and button it up and uh, it should be good. Well, there you go. There is uh, diagnosing your suburban water heater that's not heating. and. Uh, and he even got a bonus uh, how to change the pop-off valve so you know everything checked out good um, it's making hot water it's quit leaking so it's all good and uh, I'm just doing all kinds of cool hand gestures here and I'm sure I was saying some really cool stuff I, I can't remember what I was saying but uh, I know I always say I really appreciate uh, everybody that watches my videos and um, especially, you know, if you participate by leaving comments and stuff like that. Uh, right now, I'm able to answer all comments. If I don't lose the comments, uh, I uh, think I talked about that in a, in a video here just in the last couple days. So, uh, as always, um, thanks for watching. And uh, I'm going to go down the road and fix another one. And uh, y'all have a fantastic day.